Hi, I'm going to be showing you how I take notes with my iPad Pro. I use the app GoodNotes to take my notes, and it looks like this. You can have different notebooks for different classes. I'm going to create a new notebook for this. There are different covers you can choose for your notebooks. There are a lot of great design options, and there's also different paper types you can choose for your notebooks as well. There's dark paper, yellow paper, and white paper. But I prefer to use dark paper, the dotted version for your notes, but there's also lined, squared, anything like that. And it looks something like this, with your cover on the first page and your notes on the next. Then I open up my lecture using Adobe Acrobat, and I begin to just highlight the important points from lecture. If your professor gives you the lecture before class, you can do this during class, which I think is the most effective because you can sort of take notes alongside the lecture as it's happening. The two most useful ways to use Adobe Acrobat are to highlight the notes that are important and then also use the annotating feature to add specific notes or additions to the PowerPoints themselves. The next part of this process typically comes when I'm studying for an exam or I just want to review the day's lecture. To do this, I'll typically condense the PowerPoint into a one-page note in GoodNotes with the key takeaways from the lecture. There are three types of pens in GoodNotes. The fountain pen, the ball pen, and the brush pen. I typically use the brush pen to make all my headers. A tip for doing this neatly and for writing all of your notes neatly is to zoom in really big so that you have more control over how you're writing. Once I've written my header neatly, I'll take the lasso tool, move it to the center, and resize it to a bigger size so it looks like a header. Then, since the iPad Pro can have two windows open at a time, I'll open up the PowerPoint in a smaller window and have it side by side with my good notes. This typically works better in landscape orientation. Once again, I use the brush pen, this time in a new color, to make a subheader. I use the same method of writing it really small and then resizing it as needed. I then begin taking my regular notes using the ball pen. I use a 0.3 millimeter width for the ball pen and a 0.35 millimeter width for all my headers with the brush pen. Another handy feature is the magnifier, which allows you even more precision and control and also moves the page over for you as you're writing. Again, I'm creating another header with the brush pen and writing all my subtext using the ball pen. Okay, looks pretty good so far. When I have some blank empty space that I know is gonna remain empty, I tend to do a little doodle that sort of represents what we're learning about. So here, since we were talking about shortest weighted paths, one of the examples was having cheap flight itineraries. So I decided to draw an airplane taking off and landing at its destination. I'm not a great artist, but these doodles turned out perfectly reasonable and I was happy with them. The Apple Pencil with GoodNotes allows you a lot more precision than you could have typically in your normal notes. So one of the best uses for me as a computer science student with digital note taking is the ability to draw out graphs really easily using the Apple Pencil and GoodNotes 5. It's really fast to make nice clean nodes and straight lines between all of the points in the graph. And if you mess up, you can always erase something, move things around. So it makes the whole process a lot easier than doing it by hand. Then, using the graph I just drew, I wrote out the first few steps about how Dijkstra's algorithm would work on this specific graph. This is a great thing to do when you learn a new algorithm because it really ensures that you have complete understanding about how the algorithm would proceed on a given example. Then, I was feeling pretty whimsical and I wanted to include this picture of Dijkstra himself in my notes. The way that I do this is I just take a screenshot of the actual lecture, crop it, and then insert that photo into GoodNotes and resize it as I like. This technique is especially useful if you have lectures that include diagrams or other images that are necessary for learning, and that's also something that you can't do with traditional note-taking. So here I went ahead and created another header for this section. I'm using the lasso tool to move everything around. 
and I was feeling pretty inspired so I actually decided to also include the quote that was in lecture that he said, which I think is pretty relevant. The quote is, Computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes, and I think that quote is pretty accurate. Then, finally at the bottom, I decided to write out the pseudocode for the algorithm that we had learned. I actually have a pretty good technique for this that works well for me. Also, this ensures that you review the pseudocode once again, which is often the most important part of your computer science notes and are internalizing some parts of what you're actually writing down. First, I write out all of the pseudocode in one color. So you can see I ran out of space here, which I normally could just add another page, but I like to put each lecture on one page unless it's absolutely necessary to have another page. A great thing about digital note taking is you can just move everything around, and that's what I did, and I created a little extra space, which was just enough for me to finish writing out the pseudocode. I typically don't use brackets or just ignore them if they're in the original pseudocode, so you can see me here erasing the brackets that I accidentally put in. Then I go through the pseudocode again, find all of the variables, erase them, and write them in a different color. This kind of makes your handwritten pseudocode look like it was typed in a computer. I like to do this variable coloring after I've finished writing out the pseudocode because as you're writing the code, it can be hard to figure out which things are variables. Finally, just like a normal IDE would do, I erase the name of the function and rewrite that in a completely different color. So yeah, this is my one-page condensed version of lecture. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm definitely not an artist, but these notes are very legible and easy to study from. I really think that anyone with an Apple Pencil and an iPad would be able to take notes that look like these. And as one final step, if you want to send your notes to yourself to look at on another device or you want to send them to your friends who are also in your class, you can easily export them as a PDF. I actually included mine as a PDF in the description of this video if you want to check out what my finalized notes looked like as a PDF. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found some parts of it helpful. If there's any other content you want to see about computer science, technology, or anything else, definitely leave a comment down below and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, XD. Bye.